there's always one. There's always one customer that has to just come in and ruin the party. Don't know what she meant by that, but okay. Mm. Oh boy. Finally caught a minute to come and talk to you guys. <laughs> uh, when I say a minute, I have a minute. I gotta go. Yeah, she ain't lying. Hey everyone, it's Lindy. Welcome back to my channel. So I am actually at my storefront right now. I snuck to the back room with my camera so that I can give you guys a little bit of an update on what has been going on with my local storefront. So my store has been open for a full 30 days. And so I figured that this was a really good opportunity to kind of fill you guys in on everything that's been going on, kind of talk about some things that I've learned, things that I thought were a little bit harder than I had originally anticipated, things that have been easier. And I also felt like it was a good time to do this because I'm starting to notice some concerned viewers in my comment section thinking that I am avoiding talking about my store completely because it was a massive failure. So I wanted to set the story straight today. I didn't want you guys to think I was avoiding talking about the store. It's just that I've been really busy. I don't know how many of you out there have ever opened up a physical storefront, especially for the first time. I have been overwhelmingly busy for weeks now. Ever since I opened my doors, it is nonstop. I am here you know, 30 minutes to an hour before I open, I stay late every day, I'm coming in on the days that we're closed, I'm unloading trucks, I'm organizing stuff, I'm cleaning stuff, I'm making phone calls, I'm juggling a bunch of different tasks, including I'm still doing eBay, and I'm still posting videos on YouTube, I'm just a very, very busy lady. Not only that, but I am still figuring out things with this storefront. I don't want to post a bunch of stuff on YouTube without having a clear idea of what I'm even doing here. Over the last several weeks, there has been a lot of trials, a lot of errors, and a lot of successes, so I wanted to fill you guys in on all of that right now. I know that you guys were probably looking forward to some sort of open day vlog, but opening day was mass chaos. I wasn't prepared for it. My staff wasn't prepared for it. It was a madhouse. I think I saved some footage from the video cameras from opening day just so that I could try to insert it into some sort of follow-up video, but it was nuts. Most days there's so much going on. I don't even think about vlogging it because there's just so much to do. The last thing I think about is pulling out a camera and trying to add that into the mix. So I'm just going to have to tell you about it and maybe insert some B-roll here and there. As a matter of fact, I'll show you guys right here in real time. So I'm sitting in the back room. This is a view of the security camera or one of the security cameras. Those are all my people shopping right now. Yeah, it died down a little bit. So that's why I took this as an opportunity to come back here and film. The, op the, the crowd from when I first opened the doors this morning has dissipated. And so I thought that, you know, you girls got this. I'm going to go fill all my people in on how it's going in the back room. Okay, so now I wanna talk about some of the successes and some of the failures that I have had in running the storefront in the first 30 days. But before I do that, I do wanna give just a really quick thank you to Wholesale Ninjas for sponsoring today's video. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know that Wholesale Ninjas is my favorite supplier that's out there when it comes to personal care and HBA. And even though I have a storefront, I still get boxes of HBA from Wholesale Ninjas because it's just that good. I tried getting HBA from other liquidators specifically for my storefront just to try to save a little bit of money, but that was a waste of time. So I am back to buying boxes from Wholesale Ninjas for my HBA, like all the time. Because in my opinion, they do it best. They are the only liquidation company out there that actually puts their hands on the merchandise and that allows them to filter out some expiration dates that have passed or empty or damaged boxes. Other liquidation companies don't do that. It's all as is. They just throw it in boxes and send it your way. And if it's expired or damaged, that's tough. Wholesale Ninjas also have boxes of cosmetics that aren't just encased in stickers. You guys always hear me talk about stickers being a pain point, and it is most definitely a pain point with my storefront because I don't put price tags on anything. So if customers see stickers on items indicating any sort of pricing, it confuses them. A lot of my viewers that are newer to buying liquidation sometimes don't know 
know what they're getting into with other companies. And that's why I am proud to have Wholesale Ninja sponsor my channel because their quality control is always on point. Because they are sponsoring today's video, I do have a coupon code for them. The code is Lindy25 and it gets you $25 off of anything that they have on their website. Thank you again to Wholesale Ninjas for partnering with me and sponsoring today's video. <laughs> Yep, that's where our little hidey hole is with the microwave and the coffee pot and there's creamer in the fridge. I'm just sitting over here in my corner filming a video. <laughs> Don't mind me. My, ooh, ooh, look at my parking lot. Isn't that exciting? Okay, so now what do we start with first? Do we start about the good stuff or the bad stuff? Do we start with the good stuff? the bad stuff. Let's start with the good stuff and then we'll get to the bad stuff. So the first good thing that I realized over the course of the first 30 days of being open was I picked a prime location. So I got lucky enough to get a sizable storefront that is just next door to a Walmart. So I did some Facebook advertising. I didn't do any paid ads before I opened or anything like that, but I did start up a Facebook page and I did share that page to a couple of local Facebook groups where there was kind of a little bit of a buzz going. Now, the buzz really started when I was advertising to hire staff and I thought that was kind of funny. I wasn't even advertising what the store was, but just me posting to Facebook groups about hiring staff for the store created enough buzz to where people were actually sharing that post. They were sharing it to their own Facebook page not to try to entice people to go apply, but just to create some sort of buzz that there was a new store opening. So that right there got me really excited because that told me that the local area was just really excited to get a new store. It almost didn't even matter what the store was. They just wanted to know what it was all about. So then when we started doing the initial post for the store opening, that of course already had some buzz because people were just so curious to know what the store was about. From the help wanted ad, they were already waiting to see what the store was all about. So there was already an initial buzz generated on Facebook just from that. But the biggest success has to be the location of the store because there are so many people that tell us that when they drive to Walmart, they see the store and they notice that it's something new and they wanna stop in and see what it's all about. So the first major success that I've noticed in the first 30 days is definitely location, location, location. Having a really good location has helped me from needing to worry about doing too much marketing and advertising before I open my doors. So those two things alone, just simply posting to a Facebook page and having a really good location made opening day a real success. And I was so grateful for that, you guys. You have no idea how scared I was that I was gonna like open the doors and have two people walk in. That was literally my nightmare. The second success that I realized over the last 30 days is my staff. I feel like I did a really, really good job staffing my store. Every employee that's here, I love them all. They all do a really great job. And I didn't post about this publicly, but about two weeks after I opened the store, I got COVID. Yeah, I got COVID and I had to quarantine after my store had only been opened about two weeks, which meant that I was trusting my entire staff to run the store while I was stuck at home. And you know what, guys? I consider that a success because they did an amazing job. And it was really awesome to actually feel firsthand that I had created a store, I had put processes in play, and I was able to take a step back and quarantine, and that business was able to run itself and generate revenue. And I would not have been able to do that if I didn't properly staff the store. So that is a very big success that I consider. I adore my staff. I feel like I did a really good job hiring. Everyone is just a really good fit, and so that's definitely a success in my book. And then the third biggest success that pops into my brain is supply and merchandise. So I have a lot of repeat customers and those repeat customers come back because the merchandise is good. I've tried three different suppliers over the last 30 days. Yes, that many. I've been busy. I've had a lot of trucks. There's been a lot of stuff going on. Now these three suppliers are of course in addition to Wholesale Ninjas. Wholesale Ninjas is my focus on certain kinds of inventory, but the bulk of the general merchandise and the truckloads that I get are different suppliers. And I have tried three different ones and 
Luckily enough, I was able to find one supplier out of those three that I really, really, really like, and so far they're very consistent. So now I know I'm talking about a 30-day update, but really, you guys, the store has been open for almost seven weeks now. So almost two full months I've been open at this point. And I know it's kind of funny to say, you know, in only seven weeks that I found a quote, consistent supplier, but I really feel like I have. I've gotten five truckloads from this supplier so far. I've been pleased with all of them. And I feel like that has attributed a lot of the success of my store thus far, just having a good consistent supply of merchandise that people want to buy. Now, I know you guys are probably wondering who that supplier is, and I am choosing to keep that to myself for now. I have gotten myself in trouble before putting too much public on social media, and this is my business. And so I have to protect certain kinds of information, especially when it comes to the merchandise that is supplying and stocking my store shelves. So if I have private chats with people, I'll discuss that kind of thing, but I don't put it out publicly on social media. So now let's talk about some failures because everything around here hasn't been all puppy dogs, kitty cats, and rainbows. By far the biggest failure I feel I've had with this store is the pricing model. And it's not because a price that I picked was wrong, it's because people in this area don't seem to understand what bin store pricing models are. I have so many shoppers that are absolutely confused because there's no price tags on items. So the biggest failure I feel like I've had over the last 30 days is underestimating people's knowledge of what bin store models are. So you might recall I have a large pricing board that just basically tells everybody what the prices of the day are. And I figured that that was going to be explanatory enough and it's not. I have many, many, many confused customers coming up to check out, not knowing how much they're supposed to be paying for things. I have people coming over to the stocking area to ask my stalkers how the entire thing works. I figured that having a couple of really, really large like 18 foot big boards on the walls. I figured that that would be large enough to get people's attention and explain the pricing because I've been to bin stores. I know a lot of you have been to bin stores. For us, it's kind of common sense almost. You see a number on the wall, that's how much everything is. But so many of my customers are just absolutely confused about how the pricing works. I see customers looking for prices on things. They're so confused that nothing is priced. They don't know, you know, is this can of soup the same as this massage gun? And we have to explain to them, yes, everything is the same price and we have to almost use other stores like Dollar Tree as a comparison tool to say, you know, you walk into Dollar Tree and everything's a dollar. You walk in here, everything is $5. If you don't think it's worth $5, come back on another day when the price is lower and hopefully it's still here. So many customers in this area just don't understand the bin store pricing model. And so that has been a real challenge that we have had to overcome. I think I could have done a little bit better job of maybe creating some sort of video Video and posting it to the Facebook page, explaining exactly how the pricing model works. I did a post where I discussed it, but I didn't actually do like an instructional style video. I think a lot of customers might have benefited from a video like that, but I know that people just driving by seeing the sign and walking in, they wouldn't have seen the video anyway. So I think it's just going to be the kind of thing where we have to instruct customers when they're here and hopefully they learn and then when they come back and shop, they don't need to ask again. And then I think the other failure that we have had over the last 30 days is underestimating the amount of trash and how much cardboard we're gonna need to figure out how to recycle. So there's two different challenges that I think I underestimated a little bit before I opened. The primary one being how much trash was going to be initiated by customers and damage. I knew that I was gonna have some damage. I knew that there was gonna be some empty boxes and ripped things in the bins, but I grossly underestimated how much, how much, there's a lot. And then I also feel like I underestimated how much trash and cardboard we were going to have just from unloading trucks and filling bins. I swear over the first 30 days, I had to call 
the recycling and waste company every single week to change my order. At first it was kind of, oh, one trash pickup every other week, you know, and have a big dumpster. That's cool. And then it was like, oh no, I need it every week. And then, oh no, I need it twice a week. And then with the recycling container, I was like, oh yeah, one every other week will be fine. And then I'm like, no, I need one every week. And then I'm like, no, I need two every week. And no, I need two with two pickups every week. Like it just keeps increasing because I keep like underestimating how much we go through. And then we end up with like all of this trash and and cardboard just strung about everywhere with no place to dispose of it. And then add in the trash created by customers, opening boxes, all the styrofoam. I swear, styrofoam is the bane of my existence. If it wasn't enough already, it is now. And then factoring damage into that, that is something else that I think I really underestimated. Uh, was how much merchandise was gonna need to be thrown away because of damage caused by customers and putting merchandise in the bins. We've tried to rectify a lot of that by putting things like glass or things that have a lot of pieces that could end up being strewn about in the bins. You know, we have shelves that we put those items on now, although a lot of customers tend to miss those items because they think that things on shelves are priced differently or they're just so focused on digging in the bins they don't even realize that those other shelves are there. So that in and of itself has been a real challenge, but the amount of waste and damage that we go through just with the model by itself is a lot more than I had originally anticipated. And then to wrap up this video, I just want to, you know, make you giggle a little bit and tell you a story about a customer. Because with as great full as my customers are and how excited everyone is to come in and dig for treasure in my bin store, there's always one. There's always one customer that has to just come in and ruin the party. Last week we had a customer come in and when she got up to the checkout, she announced to my cashier that this was her first and also her last time shopping at my store. Yeah, she was this kind of lady. She then went off on a tirade where she talked about how we were just selling a bunch of cheap china bleepity bleep 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 and how she didn't think that people like me should be allowed to sell merchandise like that. Don't know what she meant by that, but okay. And then after she paid me $50 for her cart full of merchandise, that's right, she still bought stuff. Yeah, about $50 worth. As she's walking out the door, she then accused us of being porch pirates selling stolen merchandise. <laughs> But you know what? My cashier handled it perfectly and I just hope that she doesn't come back. I will say it is a very, very strong reminder of when you're dealing with customer service with eBay buyers, it's completely different because you're not actually having to look at them while they complain and you're not having to hold a straight face and just to smile through your teeth when you're feeling really, really angry. But for the most part, all of my customers are fantastic people. They love the store. I get messages on Facebook all the time from customers that have visited the store that just absolutely love it. They wanna know what's happening next. People are really excited for what's going on Black Friday weekend. So overall, I definitely consider the store being a real success and and I look forward to seeing it grow. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and videos like this and you wanna hear some more updates, hit the thumbs up before you leave because that'll let me know. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and ring the notification bell. That way you're notified whenever I post a new video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And don't forget to check the video description because I always put a lot of useful information in there as well as my coupon code for Wholesale Ninjas and some of my favorite lots that they have on their site. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you with my next video. Bye-bye.